Making smart, sound business decisions, particularly in real estate transfers, requires research and as much useful, reliable information as possible. Phase 1 and 2 Environmental Site Assessments, or ESAs, are an important part of that research. They provide data and recommendations indicating the environmental risk of a given piece of property. In today's world, nearly every property is subject to environmental risks. A Phase 1 Environmental Site Assessment can help determine if a property is or may have been contaminated by current or previous activity. Phase 1 ESAs help protect the purchaser of a property and limit liability by discovering potential environmental concerns prior to purchase. Lenders often require a Phase 1 ESA as it helps evaluate if environmental risks could devalue property or impact the borrower's finances. The Phase 1 ESA is generally considered the first step in the process of environmental due diligence. Phase 1 and 2 ESA work must be completed by a qualified environmental professional. These professionals have a combination of education and hands-on experience. There are three main components of a Phase 1 ESA. The first is site inspection. This includes a thorough visual inspection of the property including the interiors of any structures, the exteriors, property characteristics, and property lines. Site inspection also includes reviewing uses of nearby properties. Followed by a records review. Consultants are required to review regulatory records that may reveal known releases or spills on the property or nearby. Record reviews may also reveal risky activities such as hazardous materials handling and storage. Reviews historical land uses of the site to determine if past uses may have contaminated the site. Even if the site is a restaurant today, it may have been used as a dry cleaners 40 years ago. And finally, interviews. Current and former owners and tenants of the property often have the most knowledge about past activities at the site. They can provide a wealth of information and critical insight about the property and its history. However, without documentation, information from these interviews must be weighted carefully to ensure that they are accurate. From all of this information, the consultant will then draft a report that contains all the data that has been generated as well as conclusions. The report should also offer recommendations to address recognized environmental conditions or RECs. REC are defined as the presence or likely presence of any hazardous substances or petroleum products on a property under conditions that indicate an existing release, a past release, or a material threat of a release of a hazardous substance or petroleum products into structures on the property or into the ground, groundwater, or surface water of the property. If a Phase 1 identifies potential RECs, a Phase 2 ESA is the common next step. Phase 2 ESAs involve the collection and analysis of air, soil, groundwater, and or site building materials to assess the presence and extent of hazardous chemicals or petroleum products that are suspected or have been identified during the Phase 1 assessment. The purpose of this investigation is to obtain a better understanding of the potential environmental liabilities for the property and financial impacts of such liabilities. The Phase 2 ESA report should offer remediation and cleanup strategies, as well as estimated potential cleanup costs. Completing environmental site assessments can add three to four months to the real estate transfer process. However, the useful and reliable information obtained from this work can save the purchaser significant dollars in the long run and reduce the environmental liability in the future. We were first introduced through, through County Environmental through Nate Hersey and um, he basically educated us on what we needed to do to proceed with the, with the grant process. So, and, and how did that work for you? Worked out excellent. Everything fell into place according to plan.